Right, hello again. So now I've got the basic makeup that I put just for ease on a day when you don't feel like doing much, but you want to look better for yourself, catching your reflection in the mirror, or those around you um, who will check you, I found, to see, oh, I wonder how she is today. And according to whether I bothered to put a bit of makeup on, just the act of doing that, and also that I had a bit of colour in my cheeks, you could see the sort of relief on their faces. Um, oh, she's obviously not having too bad a day. So those are my reasons why I did put some makeup on, even in the house uh, during the day, on the, the days when I didn't feel so good. But on a day when I wanted to go to work or I was going somewhere for a special treat, I wanted to look the best that I could with what I had. So I would do the, the basics, but I would use a foundation. And you might not need it if you're young um, or even if you're older, but I feel at the, my age, at 61, I need to even out my skin tone and it gives you a bit more of a glow. So the biggest problem of all with foundation is getting the right colour. The next thing is the right consistency because the last thing I want to look is powdery and false. Um, certainly my husband will let me know if that is the case. So I've got lots of different colours and different types of uh, base, shall we say. So the one I really like is Complexion Rescue Bare Minerals. It's a gel cream. So it feels really hydrating and doesn't dry at all, looks very natural. But at the moment, this color wheat, which is good for most of the year for me, and I've got a bit of a tan or not, uh, is a little bit on the dark side. So I've got one here, which I've got a little tiny bit left of, uh, which is a long one. I, I think this is, I don't make this one anymore, but it's a pale colour. So what I do is I mix the two, just a little squirt of the pale one. And a little bit of the Complexion Rescue. And then I just give them a stir with a I've got a manicure implement there. Mix them up on the back of something clean. And then what I find most important is to use the right brush to put it on and then you can get loads into your skin without overloading or needing a lot of product and then your product lasts longer. So it's one of those, <coughs> mine is a Bare Minerals one, but they're selling them a lot on uh, online or on Facebook. You see the adverts for them. And I thought, well, I'll give it a try. I'd used it with the dry powder. Well, I'll give it a try with my foundation because I'd seen it demonstrated. I think over the years I've sort of picked up all kinds of tools and I find they can be used for different things. Never get rid of anything. It's hard to put your foundation on without pulling strange faces, isn't it? And even though I've got under eye concealer, because this is very light, I just go just under my eyes as well. So it all looks the same colour. So I think that gives more of a glow, covering more of the age spots that's sort of around here. So the next thing you can't really see my cheekbones once I've lost a bit more weight they might reappear but they've never been particularly defined so I found this brush in the Kiko shop 
and I've got some bronzer so I just sweep it over take off the excess and then I just go where I want it which is to sort of give the impression I've got a cheekbone there so underneath what would be the cheekbone and then the other side sort of pushing it in and then smoothing it brushing it up so it looks as if I've got a bit of a cheekbone there now so you can adjust it with some cotton wool and then I go back to my cream blusher just a little bit though just on the apples of the cheek Now, if you really want to go the whole hog, then a highlighter, I've got High Beam, which is Benefit. And I put that just on the top, where if I had the cheekbones, it would catch the light. Try not to get it into the crow's feet, in my case. So then with my eyes, I've got a still order eye makeup box, which I had several uh, years ago. And it's got all the colours of the rainbow and I love it. But uh, most of the time I'll go for a pinky colour or a brownie beige, which is sort of neutral and seems to suit me. So. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the brown because this is sort of a general colour, not too dark. And I've got my brushes have all got labels on, which seems a bit OCD. But I did my daughter's makeup for her wedding many years ago, and I kept them. So that one says brown. I've got a green. Uh, I've got pink, and then I've got pale. Uh, and it, <clears throat> it, it's really speedy for when I was going to work and I was doing full makeup. So what I tend to do to avoid the bits dropping is just sort of not flick it, just push it into the socket of my eye and then up a bit onto the brow bone. Depending on the shape of your eyes, you might want to go higher onto the brow, brow bone or not. It's fairly equal. And then I like to put a nice light colour on the lid. So I've got a sort of a beigey, brightish colour there, which I think sort of lifts the lid. Marilyn Monroe used to do that, didn't she? Put pale on her lid. Um, and then I always put a highlighter. The one that's actually gone out of my box is the white highlighter because I use so much of that. So I'm onto a sort of a more of a creamy white now, but still, it just lightens up that area. So I've already put my eyeliner on before when I was doing the quick makeup, but I would add to, add to that um, a line underneath to define my eyes more. So I go for a brown, which I feel is softer. And if you've got the patience, I use the smudging end of another one. That's quite a nice colour. It's a sort of a maroony colour. And it seems to make my green eyes look more green, which 
Sometimes they're hazel, sometimes they're green. Depends what mood they're in. And now the eyelashes. So this is the bit which now excites me because having lived without eyelashes for quite a few months, uh, now that I've grown them long, using the rapid lash, which I spoke about in the eyelashes one, just to say it, it's called rapid lash, but it, it's not really rapid. It took two months before I saw a difference and that's using it every night. And then after the third month and the fourth month, now I'm really seeing a difference. And I think now I, I don't want to stop using it. I want to see how far they'll grow. So I still, if I wanted to make an impression, um, be glamorous go if we ever get to go out again after lockdown I will use my primer so I try and get right in to where the lashes connect with the lid wiggle it about and then sweep it up you're probably wondering my, why my hair looks like this but I'm going to do a how to make fine hair look thicker episode after this so I've kept it damp in readiness So I've done two coats of primer. Well, Lash Primer Plus. But as I said, I have got a Kiko one, which was about five pounds, a lot cheaper. But this is, my favourite and until it runs out I will use that. So then I go to what I would call my older mascara which is nearly gone, my Lancome one. So it's quite dry but I find if I use this underneath my new one then I get more fluttery lashes and more feathery. I get right in there. And finally for the big lash, power stay Avon. When it's on offer, this is six pounds. And it's got such a nice fat bristle brush. Uh, and I just finish off with that. And then I'll do my underneath lashes, my bottom lashes, because this is a waterproof. So it's less likely to come off on the skin along here during the day or if I have a little cry if I'm watching a sad film or something so that's really coming now so these are this one lash that stayed with me the whole time and it can't be the lash that I had four years ago that's bound to have fallen out by now but it is one extremely long one and that's how it grows okay so lips last thing getting the right lip liner and having a nice sharp tip on it 
I find is makes all the difference because obviously you lose volume in your lip as you get older and then you get your lines you can use products like I had this free which is um sort of fills in the the lines but oh, we'll just go straight for the lip liner I'm just sharpening it to a nice point and then I go my cupid's bow and then from the top of the bow down I tried I know a lot of people go outside the line but I think as you get older stick to the lines or it can look really false Now, if you want your lipstick to stay on, I go like this then. To use the edge, the flat side, to give a base for your lipstick. And if I want my lipstick to stay on when I was working or if I'm going out for the evening, then I use a lip brush. And I've got a nice number seven retractable one there, which... I love and my lipstick has disappeared so the other thing is of course you can get right down and use every last bit of your lipstick um, with the brush whereas if you were just using it until it went past the lip you throw it away and go on for months with that. Oh, there it is. Trouble is, because I've got so many of these MAC lipsticks that I've bought over the years and I'm using up, I have to keep opening them to uh, to see what's inside because <laughs> my eyesight's not good enough to read the bottom. Anyway, this isn't the right colour for that my top but it's a lovely colour so looks a bit better than when I started and that's how I cope with trying to look better at this age. The other thing, of course, that I might do if I had time is sit here and hold my lashes up until they set in position. And then look even bigger. 